So uh, the file for this one, you're going to start off with this Pokey Mech Rig startup. And it's on the modules, it's under uh, iMechRig is what it's called. And you'll download that file. Once you download it, you will create a new project. You hit new, you go to 2540, you type in your last name, underscore PokeMech, or something along those lines. And then you hit accept. And then you can copy that file into the scenes folder and go from there. Okay, so this is um, the startup file that you're going to get. Now, once we've finished these first three assignments, which are the stick, the Game of Thrones thing, and the ball, now we're ready to start understanding how to rig things so that we can animate them. <clears throat> so with this uh, PokeMac, he has several features of him that we are going to be animating. Uh, one of them will be his arms, so that we can obviously move his arms, um, not only just around, but also in and out. So both of them. Uh, also on his fingers, we want to be able to rotate his fingers so that they bend accordingly. Um, he has a propeller up here. So not only will this whole thing be able to move up and down to come out of here, uh, but these blades will also be able to rotate so that you know it can look like a little helicopter thing. And it'll be able to rotate going around like this. Okay, And then finally, inside of this, and I'm going to have to hide some layers just so we can see it. Oops, not that one yet. There's a little lens that's inside here, and you'll see how we can rig this so that it actually like opens and closes just like an iris would. Okay. Um, now I've also included this, which is just a separate layer for <coughs> an extra lens. So um, if you wanted to use this lens too, you could, as a separate thing, um, create a way that your uh, PokeMac could like switch eyes, switch irises, right? So that's another thing that you could do um, on top of the other stuff. Uh, cool. All right, so let's get into just the basics of rigging first, and then we'll see you know, what we can do. I'm just going to reopen my file so I don't destroy what I just did. OK. So anytime we rig something, the whole purpose of it is to figure out the best way to animate it, or the easiest way to animate it. So when you get into little details like the fingers, I don't want to have to zoom in here and click on this finger and then go to my rotate tool and then rotate it. Now right away you can see there's an issue. Obviously it's not connected to that joint, so there's obviously that. Um, also if I were to grab, let's say, this joint and rotate it, well not only do I have to rotate this joint, but I'd also have to make sure that these items went along with that too. Okay. Now I could go through and I could parent things and move pivots and all this stuff. But Maya's created easier ways. And that easier way is through what are called joints. So under the rigging menu, um, under skeleton, there are these things called joints. And anytime you, you create joints, be in the front view, be in the side view, be in the whatever view, um, especially if you're just like freestyle drawing joints. Okay. So there's two parts to them. One of them is the actual joint, which is the round part. The other one is called a bone. Now, you'll never see the word bone um, inside your outliner or anything like that, because basically the joints are there, and the bones just connect the joints. Just like your real arm, you have a shoulder joint, you have an elbow joint, and then you have a bone that would go between those two things. Okay. So our main concern are these joints. Now, with the exception of this very first joint, I can move the entire thing around like that, but um, the first one can move and rotate. All the other ones will never move, okay? So think of this just like your arm. When you rotate your arm, you're rotating a joint, okay? I'm not like moving this joint or I'm not moving my hand. I'm rotating joints to get my uh, arm in the position I want. Now this middle one, you can consider that typically something like a hip joint. Uh, because that item would actually like move, okay? So um, those are the two parts of it. Now what's neat about this is as I'm drawing them, Maya is actually keeping track of which order I drew them in and creating basically a little hierarchy structure of it and oops, uh, making sure that the rotation pivots are all in the correct direction, okay? This one's a little bit off because I moved it. That one's all right. This one is way off because I moved it a lot. And this one is even further off. I think I might have my options set to object. There we go. That's better. OK. 
okay? So by default, it's already kind of orienting itself to how these things would rotate. And then the purpose of that is that if I have a, a hand like this, and I have a finger going out like that, I want it to rotate around that direction. I don't want it to rotate the same way that this one would, because that wouldn't make sense, okay? So let me show you what this would look like on a hand. So if I were to do a hand joint, I would draw out the wrist. I would go to, let's say this is my pinky knuckle, and then I have, this is the one that's on the hand, like right there. And then I would go to my first knuckle, I would go to my second knuckle, and then I would go to the tip of my pinky. So that's what a typical finger joint would look like inside Maya. Then I would use my up arrows to move back, and then I would draw my ring finger, and I would do the same kind of thing. This, 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 and that. Hit the up arrows again, draw my middle finger, Hit the up arrows again, draw my index finger, hit the up arrows again, and then draw my thumb. There's two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's a big thumb. I could adjust that. So I can use the D key to just move the joints. All right, so there's my hand. Okay. Now, when I do a hand like this, this is what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to create a method for me to be able to grab all of my fingers and rotate all my fingers correctly. Okay. Right now, it's not correct because we'd have to adjust some other stuff, but that's the idea. Okay. Very similar to the way that we did the, um, the stick animation, where we can grab all of those joints and be able to rotate them both directions. That's what we want to be able to do. So this, very easily, I can grab this and rotate it, and then grab that one and rotate it, and then grab the next one and rotate it, okay? So that's how a typical hand joint would look. And then it would also be probably a little bit over like this, a little bit over like that, and then the thumb would be kind of like that, okay? So <clears throat> the placement of our joints is going to be essential because if our joint placement isn't correct, then our stuff isn't going to rotate the correct way. So on this guy here, he has these little finger joints, um, fingers, and then he has these little joints right there. This is the exact spot that this joint needs to rotate from in order for this thing to work. If it rotates from way back here, it's going to look weird, okay? So just so you can see, if I put a joint in, and then I put one at the fingertip, like that. Um, Maya does a stupid thing where all the joints are always huge, so you have to go to display animation joint size, and then shrink it down. Oh, that's too small. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to move the joint way over here so you can see how it's not in the right spot. So now the way that this works, for something like this, which is a hard surface, so it's not soft, it's not squishy, it's not like, a, like my hand or body or anything like that, um, we would grab the geometry, we would shift click the joint, and then we would just hit P and that parents it to it. So that just connects this piece of geometry to this joint. Now we grab this piece of geometry, shift click the joint, and hit P again. So now, as I rotate this, look at how it's rotating off. Like, that's not how it should be rotating. As I rotate just the tip of the finger, it should be maintaining that distance right there. It should basically stay right there. So I'm going to hit undo until I get back. There we go. I'm going to put this in the correct place. There we go there. So that's the correct place. So I will reparent that, and then I will reparent that. All right. So now, if I grab this joint and rotate it, you can see now it's pivoting right from that hinge. Okay. So a joint placement is going to be a huge thing. If your joint placement is off, the animation or the rig will be off, and it'll be very difficult to uh, make him do what you want him to do. We also have to understand how things move so that we know the limitations of it. So there's typically, um, uh, in this case, there's two kinds of joints that we need to, three kinds of joints we need to worry about. 
Uh, one of them is a um, hinge joint, okay? So something like your finger, it rotates only in one direction, right? You can kind of, if you grabbed your finger, you can like twist it like that, but we're not gonna get into stuff like that. It basically is just a hinge joint, just like a door. It only goes in one direction, only rotates in one direction. Something like your wrist, your wrist can rotate in basically two directions. It can rotate like this, and it can rotate like that, okay? Your wrist going like this is not actually your wrist rotating. That's actually the bones inside here like twisting. So that's a different kind of thing. Again, we don't have to worry about it for this. Um, and then we have a uh, ball joint, which is more like your shoulder. So you can basically rotate this in pretty much any direction, okay? So we need to understand all of those so that we know how each one of these is gonna move because where the joint is placed is gonna be essential for that. So if I were to go to this finger joint here and I created joints, the only direction I care about here is the one direction. So if I put a joint right there at the end of this, and then I put another joint here at the end of that, that is perfectly acceptable in the Maya world because this is only gonna rotate in this one direction. Now, if it was also gonna rotate this way, well, then it's gonna rotate off. So I'll show you that just so you can see it. If it rotates this way, it's perfectly fine. You can see it actually rotates pretty nicely going around that. But if I was gonna have it rotate in the other direction, now it's like opening weird, okay? So if that were the case, I would have to make sure that this joint is not only placed at the center of this thing, but I also have to make sure that it's centered along it. So like in the middle of it like this, okay? Now when we do this, we wanna get it as accurate as possible. So we are gonna center these like perfectly, okay? So that if we needed to, we could rotate it from either direction. Um, also, when you model stuff, you have to keep in mind as you're modeling it, how it's going to animate so that you could obviously incorporate that in there. These fingers here um, do have a limitation. They can't go like bend in on themselves like all the way. They only can go a certain distance before this starts intersecting. If I had modeled this with some crazy, you know, thing like that, it'd be even more limiting as to how much it could actually bend the finger, okay? So you want to be aware of that if you modeled something that you later on want to animate it. All right, so let's get some joints in place so that we know where things are gonna be laid out. Now for this rig, we're going to have um, joints for the arms and joints inside the body here, okay? So in order to place them correctly, I'm gonna use a locator. And a locator is just a nothing object. It's just something that we can attach to things or move around or whatever. So I'm gonna take this locator and I'm just going to, um, I want to snap it right to the center point of this, that, okay? Now, in order to snap it right to the center of it, where are you at? There you are. I can hold down V and bring it over here. V is our point snapper. But it's not going to snap to the center of this thing. It's only snapping to points. So Maya has a neat tool under modify snap align objects. There it is and align objects. So this allows me to align the midpoints, which is basically just like snapping one object to the midpoint of another one, like that. So I click my locator, I shift click this little gear thing, and then I make sure it's on mid, make sure it's on last selected, and then I hit align. So now it takes that locator and it moves it right to the center of that. That's like perfectly where I want it. I'm gonna duplicate this again or duplicate it, I'm gonna grab the next one and I'm gonna hit G. And G will redo that last command that I did. So that last snap align object, instead of me going all the way back up here and finding it, I can just hit G and it'll redo the command. So I'm gonna grab this and duplicate it. I'm going to shift click the next one, hit G again. Grab this one, duplicate it, shift click that one, hit G again. Duplicate it, shift click that one, hit G again. And this is a very repetitive process at this point, just going through and putting these in the right spots. Now, if they get too big, right now it's hard to see. I can always scale the locators down and that will have zero effect on what we're gonna be doing with this. Okay, just easier for us to see. Now, we also want joints at the very tips of the finger. They don't do anything except for us, it's easier to select the joints if there's something right here. So I'm going to duplicate this and just point snap it over here. 
and duplicate it, point snap, duplicate, point snap. Okay, so I'm just holding V as I move that. So that gives me uh, places, locations for each one of the joints right at the center. So now I need one for the wrist, so I'm going to duplicate it, shift click this, and then do the uh, snap align. Now this is something that I'm constantly going to. It may be worthwhile to use control shift and add this to my shelf. So I can just click that and just, it's right there. All right, so that's cool. So I'm gonna duplicate this one. And this has to come over here. Now there's no exact spot for this one. So I'm just going to use my point snap to get it about here. And then in my top view, so I'm gonna switch to my top view. I'm gonna line it up to about there. That seems like an okay spot for this to be pivoting from. All right, so that's cool. I'm gonna duplicate it again. I'm gonna shift click the ball right there and then go to um, align. All right, so now if we look at where these are at, very easily we can see this is the shoulder, this is the elbow, this is the wrist, and then these are all the fingers going outward. Okay, so it's very easy to see that. Now what we just did on the one side, we need to do on the other side too to make obviously this thing symmetrical. So I'm going to grab all of these. Instead of regroup, um, snap aligning them, the object's symmetrical. So if I can just copy those over and flip them, then it should be fine. It should line up perfectly as long as I haven't done anything to screw up this model. So I'm gonna control G, group all those together, and then I'm gonna duplicate it, and then I'm going to negative scale it in the X direction. Okay, so I go over here. Whatever my X is, I just make it negative. And that pops it over there. And then you can see, if you zoom in on the um, joints there, you can see that they lined up perfect. Okay, again, something that as you're modeling stuff, you wanna consider, Eventually, I may want to rig this, so I want to make sure it's symmetrical so that it makes my life easier. All right. Now, I'll also need a uh, locator in the very, very center. So I'll just duplicate one of my locators and use grid snapping, which is X, and snap it right there to the center. All right. So that should be all of our locators that we need. So now I'm going to isolate so we can verify that's all the ones we need. Yes, that's all the ones we need. All right, so now I need to create joints that would reflect where these are at. So the whole point of the locators is just placement. This is where I want them to be. I could create a joint and then do the snap align, but it would take forever to do. This part is a lot easier to do locators and then snap it in there. So I'm gonna go to skeleton and create joints. <clears throat> the options for this don't matter. As long as they're the default ones, you should be fine. And I'm gonna start off at the center one. So I'm gonna hold down V because that'll snap to any of these and click. And then still holding V, I click, still holding V, click. I'm gonna hold V throughout this entire thing. Click, now when I get here, I have branches. So this is the wrist, and then we have one finger, two finger, and three finger. It does not matter which one we go with first. I'm gonna go with the top first. Now I have to draw the next one right here, branching off from this finger, or from that palm. So I use the up arrows on the keyboard to get back to the palm, and then hold V again, and then draw that. Hit the up arrows again. Oops. Come on. Hold V again, and then snap, snap, and snap. Cool. So now I can hit the move tool, and now that's good. Now I could have also drawn the other side right inside the same thing. Okay, so if I wanted to, I can go back to my joints <clears throat> and just pick up where that one left off. And you'll see that this pro uh, process, now that we have these locators here, doesn't actually take terribly too long. There we go, all done. Okay, the other thing that I could do, let me delete this is if I grab this here, I can go to um, skeleton and I can go to mirror joints. And what this is gonna do is it'll mirror the joints from one side of my skeleton to the other one, okay? 
Um, so if I look at the direction, I want to do that in the X. So remember I scaled my locators in the X direction. I want to pick the one of these that doesn't have X in it, which is the YZ. So now if I mirror it, you see that mirrors it right over and it ends up in the same exact spot. Okay. Now I want to do something before I do that because there's a uh, nice feature that's inside there that allows us to rename it. We need our joints to be named so that we know what they're called so that when we edit them, you know, the world is a happier place. Um, so this will be my root joint, so I just call that root. I can then hit the down arrow and go to shoulder. Now we're going to have two shoulders, so we need shoulder right and shoulder left. So I can go um, our shoulder here, that works. And then this is our elbow. Actually, I'm going to call it right shoulder. No underscores. I don't want to put any underscores. There we go. Right elbow. It helps if I'm doing the correct one also. So this is the left shoulder. You guys got to let me know when I'm doing something wrong. left palm. Okay, now when we get to the fingers, I just use index, middle, and pinky. Okay, you can call them whatever you want, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever you want to call them, as long as they're consistent. So this is going to be left, index, B for base. And then this one, the next one will be left, index, M for mid. And then that one will be left, index T for tip. So then I go to the next one and this is left, middle, B for base, left, middle, uh, middle, it's always a weird one, left, middle, tip, Pinky base. Left pinky middle. And left pinky tip. Cool. All right, so now all of these are renamed. Um, everything should be lined up good. So now I'm going to duplicate or mirror that again. So I don't grab the main one, I grab the shoulder joint, and then I go up to my mirror joint. Now here's where I was talking about. It can replace names for duplicate joints. So if I say replace all my left with right, then when it duplicates it, I don't have to go back and rename all my joints. They're already there. There you go. So now this is right shoulder, this is right elbow, and so on. Okay. If you feel like renaming them all, then just draw them all out and then just rename them if you're free to do that. All right, so that gives us our joints for the character. I should probably save this, right? Always good to save. Uh, put my name in here, Sarcona, blah, blah, blah. Good. Okay. Um, now we have to check out our joints. So I'm done with these locators. That's their whole purpose is just to place joints. The joints are placed. They're in the right position. So I'm just going to throw them on a layer and hide it in case I ever decide I need those locators back for whatever reason. So now I need to check out the joints to make sure they work. So if I go to these two here, and I'll turn this on so you can see where they're at. So that's those two right there. Okay. I should be able to rotate these both, uh, both of these joints in the same direction and have them bend the same way. Okay. So if I grab the green and rotate it, I should be able to basically rotate them inward or outward. So that is correct. Okay. Now I'll isolate my joints only so I can see this again. So I'll grab the next two and rotate that and that's working. So I'll grab the next two. Rotate that, and that's working. Okay. Now, what does it look like when it doesn't work? So let's see what it looks like. Now, mine, of course, is perfect because I'm perfect. But why are you guys laughing? <laughs> but when it's not perfect, this is what it's going to do. So I'm going to grab all the joints. Now, there is a difference between me doing this, just like on the um, stick one. There's a difference between us grabbing just that main stick joint and rotating it and us grabbing all those little stick joints and rotating them. So when I grab this and rotate it, 
you'll see how these all are going up, but some of these are actually going backwards. So watch here in this crook. These are actually rotating backwards. Okay, so even though I'm rotating them all the same direction, those are rotating in the wrong direction. Okay, and if I go this way, you'll again see how we get this like weird notch in there, right? So I'm going to hit F8. Um, I'm going to go to my question marks here. So F8 turns us to component mode, right from our hockey sheet. Question mark is local rotation axes. So basically, what is the upside and what is the downside and what is left and what is right of anything that we're rotating? Okay, so Maya has that information stored in it. So what we want to do is you can see how the Y is going up like this and the X is going down to the next joint. That should be consistent from one joint to the next joint to the next joint. So the Y should always be facing pretty much in the same direction. If I scoot down, however, you'll see that right here and right there, the Ys are not facing in the correct direction. They're actually facing the you know, downside, and then we're back to facing in the up direction. So I need to rotate these so that they go in the correct direction. So uh, before I do that, I'm going to hit F8 again. And I'm going to show you where, if you mess this up, how you can fix that too. Okay, because there's a couple different ways to do it. So if I um, look at how this is rotating, and I do this, you can see how this joint is rotating like perfect. Okay, it's like twisting perfectly in a straight line. If I, however, move this and move this, and I go to rotate it, you can see now that that is not rotating in a perfect line. Okay, so if I hit F8, you'll see that now this is kind of like really far off. It's no longer like lined up with one of these going down to the next joint. It's just like floating in space. And probably the same thing with this one. Yep, also floating in space, okay? So to, let me scoot this over to the other screen. Um, to correct it in, a, in an overall sense, okay, or get us one step closer, under skeleton, we can go to orient joints, right there. I'm just gonna reset it. And the default setting should be good, orient, okay? So now when I hit F8, um, you can see how the Y's are, this Y is up, this one is down, this one's there, this one's there, these are up. Um, so it got us closer, okay? It definitely put these back in alignment with them, but they're not in the correct direction still, okay? So now we have to do the next step. And the next step is simply just going in <coughs> and rotating this until the Y is facing the correct direction, okay? Now there's a, uh, an accurate way to do this and an inaccurate way to do this. And right now I'm doing the inaccurate way, which is just kind of eyeballing it. Okay, so that's eyeballing it. This is eyeballing it. I basically need to rotate it around 180 degrees. That's all I need to do. So Maya comes with this um, wonderful thing called the script editor. So way down here, oops, at the very bottom, there's like a little semicolon on a page. This is all the stuff that happens. So when you select something, Maya remembers it and writes it down. And when you highlight something, it does it there. When you deselect, it does it. Everything we're doing, Maya is remember remembering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot that over. And what we were doing when we did this the wrong way is we would grab this. Now watch there when I do this. I rotate, and then I hit undo. So it actually says rotate this joint, blah, 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 and then there's a number. That's what we care about, okay? That number is how many degrees we're rotating it. There's no thing out here that says how many degrees. So what we need to do is we need to basically copy this, paste it down here where it says Mel, and change this to, um, I'm gonna change it to 90 degrees, because I can just add this up if I need to. So I'm going to grab this uh, expression, this little um, script. I'm going to hold the control key and hit enter. And what you'll see is it rotated this in a 90 degree increment. I'm going to do it again. So highlight the whole thing, hit control enter. Now eventually it gets to the side where it's like, there it is. I'll do the same thing here. And there we go. I'll do the same thing here. And there we go. So now if I go through oops, and open the Maya help, apparently, don't want to do that. Uh, 
close this. Go back and grab all my joints. And then rotate. I should get a nice like curling rotation. And that's what I'm getting. Okay, and if I go the other way, it expands it. Okay, so if you go to your fingers and your fingers are not rotating in the same direction, that's what you have to do. You have to rotate it. I'll do one here so we can see how it would look if it wasn't. There we go. So I'm going to rotate it, and you'll see that one finger goes forward and the other one goes back. It's like he's broken his finger. So then I have to hit F8, and then I have to see which one I need to change. Okay. Now, based off of this, it could go either way. What I like to do is look at the whole hand and see which direction all the other ones are going and match those. So if this one has the Y up, 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 that's the one that needs to change. So I just do that little script. Okay. Now I'll leave the script there just so you can see it because you literally could just type that in. I could go down here and type in rotate-r-os dash F O 90 0 0. And if I highlight that and come on, hit control enter, it'll do that script. And then I can just hit G to redo the script until it goes all the way around. Perfect. Okay. So that's good. That works. I don't care about the elbow. I don't care about the shoulder. Um, I do care about this root joint, so I don't want the root joint to be like that. Okay, I want the root joint to be perfectly up and down. So um, I'm going to go to the front view, and this one I have to eyeball because there's no real way to get it straight up. So I'm going to take this and just rotate it until it's flat. Now I'll know it's flat because I'm going to use my plus signs. And if you look at that green line right there, you can see how it's like stepped. I'm going to rotate it down. That looks flat. Cool. This red right here should be lined up perfectly with the center of my grid. So I'm going to rotate until the red is lined up. Now I have to let go each time, but it'll work. There we go. And let's check the side view. And that looks pretty good. Okay. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It just has to be close. Sweet. All right. So now we have the joints. So again, I'm going to save because I don't want my joints to get ruined. So now what I need to do is start parenting things to my joints. Okay. So right now, if I move my stuff around, hey, what's going on there? There we go. If I move my stuff around, nothing is going to move. So I have to join all my stuff together so that they actually move together. So I'm going to go to all of these things and just start parenting stuff. Now, looking at them, this is typically the part that people get confused on, believe it or not. Um, you have to figure out where things should be parented. So looking at this joint, as it rotates, the two things that should move with it are the finger itself, like the finger bit, and this little guy here. Okay, Those two things should move. So I'm going to grab those two, shift click this joint there, and then hit P. So now when I grab this, it rotates, and that's the correct direction. Now when I come down here, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to shift click that. I'm going to click on the joint and then hit P again. So now if I grab this and I grab this and rotate it, now it's going to look like he's curling his finger in. It's so adorable. Sweet. All right, so now we do the same thing on the next one. We grab this finger, grab this, select the joint, and hit P. Grab this, grab the tube, hit the finger joint, and hit P. Now when I grab this, it's going to grab the whole thing, just like it did with the stick. And then I can rotate it and test it out. Okay. If I were to grab a joint and nothing highlights or the right stuff doesn't highlight, that means that I don't have everything parented the correct way. Okay. So it might take you a few times going through that just to figure out, like, what does this mean? Where are my parenting stuff? go there we go there we go so now if I rotate all of these they all rotate together okay that's much easier to do than trying to you know parent and move other stuff around now for the palm the palm is going to have this one 
okay? Because that makes sense that this thing here would rotate the hand. And it appears that that joint is off. So let me go to my top view. Let me hit F8. Let me rotate that. So I'm just rotating this so the Y direction is up, and then the other two are flat. I made the screen black just so it's easier for you to see what's going on. That's good. That's good. Okay. So that should be good enough. All right. So I hit F8 again. Now I can rotate it like that, or I can rotate it like this. Okay. Now that's not a perfect way to rotate the wrist, um, but that'll be fine for what we're doing. Uh, now when we get here, this again is an area people get confused on because they think that this, this piece of geometry should go to this. And if I put it on that piece of geometry, what's going to happen is as I rotate the wrist, the forearm is going to go out like that. Okay, and that's not what should happen. This item goes back to this joint. And this item goes back to that joint. So now when these rotate, you can see how that takes the disc with it. Okay. Typically when you parent stuff, it always goes up. So if I take this and I shift click that joint, it's going to go up to that next joint. Okay. So that sphere is going to go to that joint. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. So geometry, geometry, joint, parent, geometry, whoops, geometry, joint. Now when you grab the joints, you don't have to grab right here. You can grab this and it'll grab the next one up. So that makes, again, a little bit easier to select things. Uh, joints do have priority too, though, so make sure that as you're selecting stuff, you don't accidentally select a joint, because if I were just a marquee, it's going to grab joints versus geometry. Now, if this joint is like the other one, I'm probably going to have to rotate this so that it's lined up right. So I'll pick the Y up straight like that. And I'll go to my top view so I can see that better. We'll rotate it. And that should be good enough once I do that. So I'm going to take this and parent it to that. Take these two, parent it to the elbow. Take this one, parent it to the shoulder. And it is difficult to see, so you just kind of have to look around and eventually you'll figure it out. All right. So now all the arms are parented. So now if I were to grab that main joint and move it, you'll see how the arms are going to move with it. Okay, whoops. Um, then what I need to do is obviously the rest of him also has to be parented or connected some way so that it all moves. So the rest of it is just going to be connected to the root. Um, anything that's going to be moving separately, we have separate joints for. But all the other stuff is just going to move together. Okay. So if I just go to the Pokeball here and I drop him inside the root just with the middle mouse, now I can click on the root. And I can move the entire thing around. Okay, so that's an option for, or not an option, that's a way that we can do that. All right. So that's cool. Now I'm going to save this again. All right, and then we can start actually like rigging this. Okay, so the joints are there just to be able to give us some control over uh, moving the hands and moving the fingers. Um, let's create a control for the propeller here, okay? So under window animation editors, we've played with the graph editor, we've played with the, oh, 
with something else. With the dope sheet. Um, there's also a couple other things inside here like um, expression editor and under the general editors there's another one called connection editor somewhere in here right there um, then there's also some other areas we can also play with okay so we're gonna set up this propeller so the, the propeller itself should be able to rotate from the center right so all of these should be spinning from the center and if we look really close under here you'll see that there's little bars that's where they should be pivoting from okay so if I grab this <clears throat> and I shift click that and I just hit P to parent it now this item will pivot from there okay because it's basically sharing that pivot now so I'm going to grab this, I'm going to shift click the little rod right there and hit P to parent it. I'm going to grab this, shift click the little rod, P to parent it, P to parent it. Okay. So now if I go into each one of these rods right here, and then I go to rotate, and I rotate them, you'll see that they all rotate together. Now this is where um, rigging comes in because we want to be able to control these things efficiently. This is not efficient because I would have to rotate one of these and then switch to the next one and rotate, then switch to the next one and rotate, then switch to the next one. So that's like a big hassle. So I don't want to have to do that. Um, I also want to be able to lift up this entire thing. Okay. So this item right here, I'm going to use actually that item. I'm going to use this item as my main item that will basically lift this or be able to lift this entire thing out. So I'm going to take these little rods that are in here, and you can select them in object mo or in shaded mode, but it's easier for me to see it. I'm going to shift click this and parent it to that. I'm going to take this, shift click that and parent it. I'm going to take this, shift click that and parent it. Okay, and I'll show you where the stuff is parented so you can see it. All right, so the heli top, which is this very top piece, has the pole parented to it. And then the pole has the little clip parented to it, which is that. And then the clip has each one of those rods parented to it. And then each one of the rods has the blades parented to that. Okay, so blades to the rod, to the clip, to the pole, and then to the heli top. Okay, so now if I click on this, I can move this whole thing up and down. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier to do that. All right, so that's working. Cool. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to create a controller because, again, the more things we can automate, the better off we're going to be. So if I can create a controller just like we did in the Game of Thrones, we slide one slider and we can have this thing come up and the blades come out, that would save us, like, loads of time, okay? So I'm going to go to my uh, create. I'm going to go to my curve tool. And just so you can see, you typically want to have something significant that shows it. So if you remember in the um, Game of Thrones one, I used circles, and it was hard to tell what did each, each circle do. Because each circle kind of did its own thing. Some of them uh, animated the stairs. Some of them animated the little bars coming out. Um, so it's very difficult if you don't have some sort of indicator. On the stick one, there was actually like little curves, so that was much easier to see. So... In here, I can go to the curve tool, and I could draw a shape. Okay, and then I would hit enter, and then there would be my shape. Okay, so that's one way that you could create a specific shape. You can also use a pencil. I've never really used the pencil, but it's just drawing, and it gets to get another curve. You could also go to create text or type. And inside here, I want to is there a spot to change it. No, they got rid of that. Yeah, there used to be a spot where you could just make type, but apparently not. Wait, no, just to make sure. Nope, that's it. Okay. So over here, I could make like a letter. Like if this is the propeller, I could make a P, and that would be a very obvious sign. This control is going to operate the propeller moving up and down, OK? 
okay? So I could definitely use that. Um, once I have this shape, I can just go to my geometry and just say create curves from type. And now I'll get curves for the letter P. You can also use, uh, if you've ever used a character map, this is basically every font has all the characters listed out as to what they are. So if there's a specific uh, symbol that you're like, hey, this might be a good one to use, um, you could go through here and grab one of these. Not that that would be a good one. Let's just say this. And I would say select. I would say copy. I would go into my type tool. And I would paste that in there. And that doesn't give me, that gave me that one. Okay, so I don't know what the dots are for, but it gives me that top little piece. Okay, so again, I could go through these and find out uh, what I wanted. Um, the other way I could do that is go through Illustrator, draw out a path that I wanted, save it as an Illustrator H file, and then just go to create um, Adobe Illustrator object. And this would allow me just to bring in the curves for my Illustrator object, and then I would have a shape of whatever I used, okay? So for this, I'm just going to make my own shape, just so you can see how, do you, how you could make your own shape. Okay, so instead of having one controller for the propeller and one controller, let's say, for the guy, I'm going to use one controller total for all of those. So I'm going to start off with a circle here, and I'm going to add some divisions. So let's say 16. And then I'm just going to grab every other one. And then just scale it in. Wonderful. There we go. Fancy little design. So this is what my controller will be for basically grabbing uh, my Pokemech and moving him around. That's what that will be for. Okay. Um, I'll also be able to come over here in the channel box and control the propeller moving up and down. Um, and then I can also control some other stuff, whatever I decide I want to. If I want to control the iris from here, I can do that. If I want to um, control the arms from there to a point, I can do that as well. So that's where that's going to be. Um, I need to freeze the transforms on it. I need to delete the history. So modify, freeze, transform, edit, delete history. And then I need to drop the root inside of my curve. Okay, so now this curve is or circle is going to be pokey controller. Or poke controller? No, pokey controller. Or he can be really cool and use two E's. Poke E controller. Awesome. So now I need to create a controller on here, an attribute on here that allows me to control this thing moving up and then the blades coming out. So I'm going to go to uh, create, nope, modify, add attribute. Instead of bunching all these together, like if I just created an attribute, it jumps it in right here and that's kind of hard to see the rest of it. Like where are my custom ones because of this extra stuff? So what I want to do is create some spacers. So I just do some underscores. And now I have basically an underline, and then I can have what I want. So this is going to be propeller up. OK. Now, I just created that just as a, um, as a nothing, just a, an item that I typed in, and I just hit create. Um, these specific things down here, they do mean something, okay? So this we can't change afterwards. 95% of the time, you're going to leave it on float. A float is basically just like what kind of number goes in here, what kind of value. So a float could be any number, positive or negative. It could be a decimal point. It could be whatever. Um, a vector is a three-digit number. So something like red, green, blue, if I was trying to store color information or if I'm trying to store... Um, rotate x, y, z, I could save that into a vector. Um, integer is a whole number, so one, two, three, four, five. So if I wanted something very specific. Boolean is a yes or no, true or false. So visibility is a Boolean. It's either on or it's off. Okay. Um, string is basically just a piece of text. And then enum allows us to create a list. So where I showed before, you can have separate um, uh, lenses in here. I can make one lens, you know, the, the, the iris lens or the LED lens. I could have those two different options. And then someone will be able to come over here and pick from the list 
and then basically turn off or turn on different features. Okay, so that's what these mean. And then down here, this is the minimum of the value, this is the maximum, and then this is the default. Okay, so when we come over here to something like rotate, and I rotate, it's a float because we get decimal points, and it can go pretty much to any number in the world. And you'll see that there's no limit. I can rotate this as far as I want to rotate it. But some things we may not want to do that. So something like the propeller coming out of here, there's a limit. There's, it basically comes out. There's no more like coming out. It's just like right there. So I want to control or, or um, limit this so that it doesn't go up to 50 or 100 or a billion. So if I didn't do it when I did my add attribute, if I didn't type in my values here, which should be 0, 10, and 0, uh, under modify, I can edit the attribute, delete the one I don't want. Uh, I have to delete that in a different one. Uh, and then just say that this one has a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10. Okay? So what that does is it limits how far this can go. So now it can only go to 10. So 0 to 10. So you'll notice on the Game of Thrones one, some of those had a limit of 0 to 10. And that was like the perfect limit. Some were like 0 to 8. And then one of them was like 0 to 80, right? And that 0 to 80 one was hard to get all the way to 80 because you had to basically click and drag, click and drag, click and drag to get it all the way up to 80. Or you could type it in, right? So 0 to 10 is typically a good range that you're going to find. Any rig that we download, typically they're going to use 0 to 10 as the range that you work with. All right. So let me delete that other attribute because that's going to drive me nuts. Uh, delete that one. All right, so now I need to make this propeller up work, okay? Just because I called it propeller up, Maya has no idea what I'm talking about. So I'm going to um, open up a new window here. I'm going to go to my translate Y. I'm going to go to edit and say set driven, okay? All of these are different things that you can do with animation. So one of them is expressions that we talked about. Set driven is, um, again, just with everything, there's Confusing things, set driven is one of the probably most confusing rigging things that people have trouble with. So the way that it works is there's two items. There's a driver and a driven, okay? So the driver is the controlling object. So think of the driver like if you had a um, remote control car, you have that controller. As you hit the up on it, the car moves forward. As you hit the down, the car moves backwards. As you hit another button, the car jumps or does whatever, okay? So this, that's what the driver is going to be. So for this, this uh, circle right here, this propeller up, that's our driver. I want to make that do something. So I'm going to load that as my driver. Okay, so here's pokey controller. Here's propeller up. Now the driven is what's controlled. So when we hit up on the controller, what is actually going to happen? Like what is going to move? Now with this, instead of it doing just one thing, we could have it do 50 things if we wanted. I could have propeller up, um, move my Pokeball around the entire scene, and then explode and then do whatever, okay? So you can have it do a bunch of stuff. So with this one, we're going to do it one thing at a time. So I'm going to take this, that's going to be our first piece, and that's going to be the first one that's driven. Okay, so I load that as my driven. So Maya wants to know, okay, you have the attribute, so propeller up, what is that going to control specifically? So is it going to control the visibility, the translates, the rotates, or the scale? So in this case, it's going to control translate Y. Okay? So the way that this works, I have to make sure that my driver has selected the item and the attribute, and the driven has the item and the attribute. And just like keyframes, I have to specify what these things are set to. So basically, when propeller up is at 10, I want the propeller to be up like this. So I'm going to hit key. Okay. Then when propeller up is at zero, I want this to be inside the Pokeball. That's pretty good. And then I hit key again. So now to test it, I'm going to click on that, click on the propeller up uh, number, and just drag it to the right. So now I just created a rig or a controller that allows me to do that. Okay, so that's awesome. Now what I want to do is I want to maybe have this um, happen a bit quicker. Because what I could do is have the propeller up 
move up and then also have the wings fly out also, okay? So from zero to 10, this is what happens is it just goes up. But what happens if it, let's say, gets to, um, let's say seven, okay? So maybe at seven is when these uh, propeller wings actually start like lifting up. So from seven to 10, that's when it would lift up. So I'm gonna go inside here. I'm gonna grab these things. because that's what I would use to do that. I'm gonna load those as my driven. Okay, I can grab all of them at the same time. I have to see which direction they're gonna rotate. So in this one, some of these are gonna be X and some of these are gonna be Z. So I'm gonna grab X and Z. Okay, and I just use my control click to grab those. So when uh, propeller up is at seven, that's where these guys are gonna be. Actually, let's set it to six. We'll just see if that works. All right, so when that's at six, that's where they're going to be. So I'm going to hit key. And then when propeller up is at 10, I'm going to go through and grab these things here. Oops. One at a time, apparently. And just rotate it out. So that one's going to go there. And this is about 75 degrees. So if I know that, then I can come to the next one start rotating it, see which direction it goes, and then just type it in negative 75. This one, rotate, that one's gonna be negative 75. This one, rotate, probably positive 75. Let's see. So now I highlight these again, make sure these are still clicked, and hit key. So now if I go back to the Pokey controller and I go to the propeller up, You'll see how I get two for one. Okay. Now that's an awesome way for us to be able to control this because now we have this thing where we can actually have the propeller come up and go out and we don't have to worry about zooming in there and grabbing these things and rotating them, especially how long it took me to grab each one of those and rotate it. Okay. Now, if you want to get fancy with this, then you can start to play with some of these settings. So all of those keyframes that we just did, I don't know why I closed that, I didn't mean to. Whatever, I'll get it back. Um, all of those will show up in the graph editor. So if I go to my graph editor and I click on this top one, there's the set driven for it. So these are not animation keys, these are set driven keys, okay? They work pretty much the same thing except for instead of us updating the time slider down here, we're updating a different value. So at um, zero right here, or yeah, at 10, the, when, the, um, when this controller here is at zero, there we go, this caps value is at negative seven point, whatever that is, five, nine, eight. When this is at 10, the propeller's value is at zero, okay? So I can take this <clears throat> and just kind of play with it a little bit. So I'm gonna move this back instead of this being at 10. I'm gonna put that at eight. And then do that. So what this should do is actually do a little bit of overshoot, okay? So if you remember from the Game of Thrones ones, those things didn't just like, the um, little sound bars didn't just come up. They kind of came up and then went back down, okay? So that's what this is gonna do. And instead of just coming straight up, it's gonna come straight up and then pop back down again. So you can see how it kind of rests in place. Okay, now I could emphasize that even more by grabbing that again grabbing this, and just to really emphasize it, I'll do that. Okay, this is gonna fly up too far. There it goes. <laughs> okay, so that's way too far. So then I would go back to this, I would click that, I would click this, and I would middle drag there. Okay, that's still too much because it still comes out of there. Good. All right, that 
work. Cool. Uh, now I can control the propellers. So I'm going to grab the propellers here. Now I don't have to grab them individually. If I just marquee this, it'll actually show me all the stuff that's there. So everything I have selected. So here's the rod, here's the rod, there's the rod, there's the rod. So instead of them starting off at frame six when they start like opening up, I can have them start, let's say, at frame four. So now let's see what that looks like. I can probably go even further. I can probably go to like two. Yep, I think I'm going to go to two on that. All right, so now we've just created a controller that allows us to do exactly that. Okay, now the last thing we'll do with this one is we'll make a way that we can spin the propeller around, okay, because we want some way that we can do that. So if I grab this and rotate it, obviously that will rotate the propeller around, but I want to create an automated way to do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to my rotate Y, and I'm going to go to um, expressions. I could use a set driven, but a set driven typically has limits. It starts here, it ends there. I want something that's just going to automatically just update forever, basically. So if I go into this and I say, um, let me make this bigger so you can see it. I'll explain this in a second just so you know what I'm doing. Okay. So this is um, basically just like the set driven. So we have a controlling object and a controlled object. This right here is what's being controlled. This is what's controlling it. So right now, the heli top, heli top, which is the name of my object, it's rotate y, rotate y, is being controlled by the time. Okay. So whatever our time equals, that's what our rotate y equals. So I hit create. If I type something wrong, down here it'll give me a red error and it'll freak out and then I'll call the teacher over and they'll help me out. Um, typically it's, it's, punctu or it's um, capitals, right? So if I had a lowercase t, that's different to Maya than the uppercase t. So make sure you have that correct. Same thing with time and all that. All right, so if I hit play, there you go. There's our expression in work. <laughs> okay. So time does not travel very quickly inside of Maya, as you already guessed. Um, 24 frames is one second. So we haven't changed our settings to 30 yet, so that's what it would be. Um, so or one is one second, so our time is actually one. So basically every 24 frames, this rotates one degree, which is not much. So if you love math like I do, you can just add stuff in here. So I can just say, just. This is not going to work correctly, but let's, I can add 50, okay? So whatever my time is, it'll just add 50 to it. So instead of at frame 24 being at 1, it'll be at 51. And instead of being at 2 at 48, it'll be at 52, okay? Now that's not going to make it go quicker. That'll just jump it to a different spot. If I multiply it times 20 or multiply it times 100, basically every second will be 100 degrees. So instead of one second, it's 100 degrees. Instead of two seconds, it's a 200 degrees. So I hit edit. And then now I can rewind and then play. So now it's going pretty quick, not super quick, but pretty quick. right? Uh, I can go even crazier. Let's say I want this to be 1,000. There we go. So now it actually looks like a propeller spinning. Now what I want to do is be able to control this so that outside of that expression editor, I can actually set keyframes. So that way I'm controlling how fast it's moving versus you know, me coming in here and just typing in numbers. Okay? So to do that, I'm going to go back to my circle and I'm going to add a new attribute. So this one is going to be called propeller speed. And that's fine. It's going to be a float, which is fine. 0, 5, and 0. I shouldn't need to go any higher than 5. That's just ridiculous. It'll explode. All right. So I'm going to go back to here. I need to get my expression back up because I closed it. So if I go to select expression name, I click on it. There it is. All right. 
So let's say that 500 is a good number to go with, okay? So the heli top rotate y is going to equal time times 500. Um, actually, let's do 250, okay? Now, in order for my value to have some influence on this, I have to multiply my value times whatever this is, okay? So I'm just going to punch in here and go to pokey controller dot propeller speed. Uh -huh. Now, I remember the correct words so everything worked out, okay? Um, if you forget what they are, write them on a piece of paper. You can go to this item, you can go to propeller speed, and then you can see this is pokey controller propeller speed. So now if I rewind this and hit play, you'll see nothing happens. Okay, so let's look at why nothing is going to happen. So if I take the time, and just for the sake of easy math, we'll go to 24. So 24 frames, the time should equal what? No, just, just with time. What does time equal it? At 24 frames, if this was just set to time, what would it be reading? One, right? So one second. So then we multiply that times 250, and then we get 250, okay? So then we multiply it times whatever this is. So this value is zero. So what is 250 times zero? Zero, right? So it's zero. So there's, it doesn't do anything. Now, if I were to animate this, so let me rewind this back to the beginning. Let me set a keyframe. Actually, let's go to 40. We'll set a keyframe here. I'll go up to 65, and then I'll set this to 3. There we go. So now we'll hit play. And there we go. So now it picked up speed. So now it goes from being at 0 to actually like ramping up and then going fast. Okay. Now, in order for this to be believable that it's actually moving, this has to go pretty fast. Um, don't worry right now too much about how fast it needs to go. Oops. Let me just throw an Arnold light in here just so I can see it. So right now, it looks like it's not spinning at all, even though it's spinning like crazy, because I don't have motion blur on. So let me just turn motion blur on. And then we'll do end of frame, and I'll add some more keys in here, and then take my length up. All right, so it doesn't look like it's rotating too much. Nope, it's not, okay? So this is, if I look at the rotation, it's going basically like 20 degrees each time. So it's not rotating too much. So I can go back to here and maybe crank this number up to five. Again. There we go. Now we're getting some nice blur on there. Sweet. Okay. So now I know that 0 to 5 is a good range. If I didn't see any blur, maybe I would need to go back into this expression and type in a bigger number here. If this is set to 5, then it's still not going to go anywhere near as fast as it needs to go. Okay. So that's one expression that we will use for this. Uh, we can modify this even further and tweak it and do whatever. Um, this expression, just to keep it simple, does not work backwards, meaning that I can have him ramp up to a speed, but if I tried to get him to go back to a speed, he would actually like spin backwards, okay? Because eventually what would happen is this number would equal 0.1 or 0.25 or 0.5, and that would cut his rotations in half. Okay, and again, just so you can see it, uh, let's go here, and I'll set a key, and then we'll go up to this, and then we'll set this to zero. All right, so now let's watch the rotations up on here. So nothing, nothing, nothing. So you can see we're basically rotating sometimes 300 degrees from frame to frame, which gives us some really nice motion blur. 
3,800, 3,900, 4,000, 4,100, 42, 43, 47, 46, 46. So now we're going backwards. So what should be happening in this case is he should be rotating the same direction. Like it should be still getting higher, but it should be slowing down. But what's happening is it's starting to rotate backwards. Okay, which would cause our propeller to look kind of weird at the end of it. Okay, so this expression, to keep it simple, like I said, is just for going one direction. Uh, we could oops, uh, we could write other expressions that would allow us to control it, basically going forward and backwards and whatever else, but it would be a bit more complex. Sweet. All right, so that should give you plenty of stuff to digest um, to start playing with this thing. If you are done with your bouncing ball or you're going to be done this weekend, you want to start uh, on this one. Um, after we get this done, which is, that's pretty much done, then it's going to be moving on to the arms to get them to work so that we can actually move the arms, move all the fingers, tuck the arms inside the body and be able to pull them out, and then be able to control, let's see, be able to control the um, iris that's inside here. And the iris is actually probably the easiest part of this whole assignment is the iris. Okay. And then once we're done, our animation part of this is that we're just going to be taking our rig that's all finished and showing all the controls off. So showing how he moves, showing how the propeller comes up, spins around, showing how the arms come out, showing each one of the finger movements, and then showing the iris, and then rendering it out, and that's it. Okay. Um, I believe I showed some examples before, probably last class even. Where's my demo folder? So these ones are just telling a little story. There's the one with the not iris, but the, um, oh, that one, yeah, there's just a light behind it. But you can see how his arms come out. There's his fingers all moving around. Here comes a blade. And then flying away. I don't want to have in that folder. I thought I had more. I do have more somewhere. All right. Cool. So obviously no questions now. There never is. And then uh, <laughs> I will post it onto Canvas and YouTube, and then you can uh, ask questions after. Cool. Are there any questions?